Coming up next on Boston Rock Talk, the John Spencer Blues Explosion. They bring the noise, the chaos, the punk, the funk, and they'll be sitting down to talk with us about all things New York. Welcome to Boston Rock Talk. It's a live music and interview show that we are shooting here at the Comcast Studio in Norwell. My guest today, the John Spencer Blues Explosion. John, Judah, and Russell are here with us, and uh, we're going to do some talk, some music, some more talk, more music, and uh, have some fun. Welcome, guys. Thank you. You guys have been a band, if I'm not mistaken, since 1991 in one form or another, I guess. What accounts for that kind of longevity? Well, uh, it feels good, and so we keep doing it. <laughs> but it has not been a consistent run of 20 years. No, we've, years. We've, we've taken breaks at times. There's times when we, we didn't play at all. Mm -hmm. um, the longest one was maybe two or three years. And I think maybe that accounts for some of the, you know, has to do with the longevity because at times we have, you know, not seen each other, not made any music together, and done other projects and played with other people. Do, do you guys sort of look at the Blues Explosion as the mothership and then with other tributaries? I think George Clinton looks at the uh, well, it's his, Blues Explosion he, he, as yes, the mothership. Yes, yes, yeah. I, I was borrowing George's <laughs> term, but, you know, to extrapolate a little bit, I mean, is, is this sort of the central musical outlet for all you guys, or uh, how do you look at it? Yeah, yeah. I, for me, yeah, yeah. Well, your, name, your name is in definitely the middle. right now. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. There was a period where, uh, I mean, you and I talked about this. I don't know if you remember, but we, uh, I was at the Boston Globe at the time. We did an interview, and you had dropped the John Spencer from the name. You were the Blues Explosion. Just proved to be too confusing for people. You know? How? I think always, right from the very start, I've, I've always, you know, on stage, I talk about the Blues Explosion. I mm -hmm. shout the name of the Blues Explosion. I, yeah. I'm in love with the Blues Explosion. And so I think it was in the spirit of that, you know, that, that we tried changing the name and it really just caused such a headache with promoters and, uh, you know, fans. Well, were they saying, like, this is the band, but John's not in it? <laughs> or a lot it of, just, I don't know. There's been a lot Good of record bands store, coming along, too. Under Spencer, under Blues Explosion, yeah. right there. Just right People there. have been copping the name, too, you got. So it wasn't like you two guys saying, hey, enough of this John Spencer guy as, as the title. We want just the blues explosion. No, it was my idea, and it was a stupid idea. And it was my idea <laughs> to name the band the, the John Spencer Blues Explosion, and I guess I have to take blame for that as well. Let, let's talk about that. We, uh, you have said at various points in song and in interviews that we're not a blues band, damn it. We're a rock and roll band. That's true. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we have to take a lot of influence from the blues, but we don't, I don't think we play blues. We play rock and roll. Um, so uh, it has definitely tripped some people up, uh, the name of the band, it's confused some people, but it's not just the name of the group, I think, you know, the way in which we play our songs, the way in which we write our songs, uh, the way we comb our hair even, maybe, it's, uh, I think, befuddles some, some people in the, in the public. I think, actually, when I first heard the name, what I thought, when I tried to figure out that, no, you weren't a strict blues band, I kind of went, oh, it's like if the blues exploded, maybe this is what would come out of it. Any, any, uh... Okay. Yeah, all right, yeah, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, you guys, uh, new record? Yes. First one in, I'll let you hold it. Yeah. Uh, first one in how long? Just two years. Two I'm years, there. okay. All right, which isn't that long. Um, Freedom and, Tower. Yes, now... Yeah, we, new we, album from the Blues Explosion. It's available on vinyl, hot green vinyl. Hot yeah. green. Freedom Tower. Well, a new record from the John Spencer Blues Explosion. It's not just Freedom Tower. It's got another title. What's no it Wave Dance Party 2015. You've got to explain that. What does this all mean? <clears throat> well, uh, we're, uh, the record is in most large ways about our, our home. It's the city of New York. Uh, we're a band from New York City. We're, we live there. We've always lived there. We've always worked there you know, for about 24, 25 years. Um, we've taken a great uh, inspiration and influence from our hometown. Um, not just from the musicians and artists that have lived there and worked before us uh, and at the same time, um, but also from the city itself. It's a great big, uh, you know, overwhelming place. Uh, it's hard not to, to live there and have it really uh, impact your daily life. 
so the, a lot of the songs are about our hometown or mm -hmm. about New York City, and um, so that's No Wave is a, is a, is a I think, uh, a musical movement that was uh, very yep. particular to New York City and really confined so, almost sort of, exclusively to, to New York City. Sort of early 80s, right? Yeah, yeah. Bands like with DNA, uh, yeah, Lydia Lunch. James Chance, yep. uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and the dance party is, um, well, this is our uh, dance record. When I was making it, uh, it was always kind of in my head that it might be a, a, a dance album or a dance party. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was kind of the, the title in the back of my head somewhere. Uh, the Freedom Tower part came very late in the game, and for me, that uh, my, my my wife uh, works for, she's in publishing, and her office has moved recently from Times Square down to uh, the World Trade Center, the mm -hmm. New World Trade Center. And so she was, you know, at, at home I'd be here a lot of talk about, the, you know, having to change offices and the new building and, you know, One World Trade. And um, it hit me that, you know, Freedom Tower was a perfect uh, title for an album about New York City. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of... Uh, in, 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 in so many different ways, you know, good and bad, right and wrong, it, it, it kind of sums up the, 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 the city today. Well, you guys are going to start us off with a song very much about the city, uh, Betty yeah. versus the NYPD. Uh -huh. uh, you want to tell people a little bit about what that might be about? Um, well, a little bit, I suppose. Uh, I guess it's about a sex worker. Um, uh, recently, I read a couple books. Uh, one was uh, the Patti Smith uh, book, uh, Just Kids, mm -hmm. and the other was the Richard Hell book, um, I think the title's about, I dreamed it uh, was a clean tramp. Um, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and both are really wonderful books. I'd recommend anybody to, uh, when maybe if you're at the, your local record store. Um, <laughs> Where they? Well, after you pick up Freedom Tower, then you can go to your local bookstore <laughs> and, and support uh, your local stores. Uh, or, you know, if you want to, you can go online and order both at the same time. But Sorry. those are great books for anybody who wants to, to read. Um, but they're but this, uh, not just interesting to, to read about these uh, Patti Smith and, and Richard Hell's uh, musical careers and development, but also that both authors uh, paint a very vivid uh, uh, picture of, of a New York City that is uh, largely uh, gone yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, lost. Um, so I think that was all sort of kicking around in my head and, and, and definitely influenced the song Betty. So does the does the Betty song sort of take place in a mythical New York or a New York? I think a was... lot of it, yeah. I mean, for me, I fell in love with with I guess a mythical New York City. I, mm -hmm. you know, was living somewhere else and was really into records by people such as uh, DNA and Lydia Lunch, yeah. Sonic Youth, Swans, yeah. um, Suicide Ramones, and and The Velvets. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I, you know, I think I constructed this uh, New York City in my head, and also uh, filmmakers like Richard Kern. Um, uh, Nick said. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so um, I sort of fell in love with the East Village and the kind of art music scene, and I think that perhaps I still relate to New York City and to, to that kind of New York City, which is, you know, gone. Mm -hmm. it, it does not exist. Um, so you know, maybe also with this record, where the Blues Explosion is trying to, you know, uh, create a, a new uh, uh, myth. <laughs> a new myth. Yeah. Why don't you uh, play us? Betty okay. Versus New York. All right. Yeah.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> the, the aggression is, is great. Uh, I love that. And one thing I wanted to ask you, John, you were in a band called Pussy Galore many yeah. years ago. And there was a quote that you gave somebody, I'm just going to read what the quote was, about, you said, we were angry, anti-everything people, genuinely angry people, and we wanted to throw that anger out to other people. Yeah. I'm guessing that's not where you're from, coming from now. No, no, I was, uh, you know, that was a long time ago. I was, uh, well, I was definitely younger. Uh, I'd like to think that kind of grown up a little. Um, yeah, I think I kind of worked through some stuff with that band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think sometimes people hear a sound like what you've got here today and they interpret that as anger because it's so rash, loud. But how do you view it? I mean, do you view it as sort of a catharsis sort of thing when you play? Or? It's freeing, you know. It's, it's what rock and roll is. It's not just anger. It's mm -hmm. a lot of things. It's, it's yeah, it's... It, it, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's really freedom, you know, that's what it really feels like. I mean, it's, it's got sex in it, it's got anger, it's got, you know, it's happy at the same time, you know, it's not just one feeling, it's a lot, of, it's, a, it's a whole emotional range. I think that's a good point, too, because musically, you jam a lot of different things into a fairly short space, I find, uh, you know, song by song. I mean, that was, what, maybe two and a half minutes? Yeah. And, and a lot of your songs are deceptively short, like two and a half or three and a half minutes or something. They feel longer, and I mean that in a good way, just because it's, <laughs> it's like, I mean oh, it in a good way. I know what you're saying. Yeah, because there's, there's so much going on in there. Um, I guess I'm curious about sort of composition, because they, they don't seem to me to be something that would just kind of roll out easily. I mean, are there parts put together to make these things? Do you look at it that way? We work on the songs. I mean, we don't just, it's not something that, comes like immediately I mean, mm -hmm. we, we get together it comes easier I mean it comes easy enough that we you know we have a, a you know a chemistry that makes it come easy enough but it's not something that you know it takes a minute but you know we have a process usually it's pretty much the same process we get together we uh, we play we feel something sounds good and we just kind of work off of that and eventually it starts developing into something more cohesive, and we work on that. And you know, we don't force anything too much. We don't push, you know, for something that's unnatural. It's, you know, it's always pretty organic. And then you know, you know, materializes into a song that we're happy mm -hmm. about. See, for this record, you were talking about the New York theme that's there. Did you come in with the idea that we're going to write an album about New York? No, or did that just kind of evolved. No, it was not a. It was not a concept album. There was no concept mm -hmm. beforehand. And it is, you know, uh, that was something which sort of emerged. And it's a very loose uh, theme, you know. Right. It's not a heavy. No, no. It's not quite like Lou Reed's New York. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's more, more sort of. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, um, it's not like that. Um, yeah. And what you're talking about, too, uh, Russell, about the, uh, uh, the celebration, I think, that aspect of it. I think that's, I guess, kind of your job, isn't it, to bring the party every night i mean is it that yeah, remember, i mean people are yeah. looking looking to us to uh to let something go uh, mm -hmm. let something out uh and and uh, you know really kind of burst through uh to someplace else uh for them on their behalf and mm -hmm. kind of allow them to do that a little bit you know yeah. when we're playing a show it's it's not just us we're you know we're playing with the whole crowd with everybody in the room and you guys rather famously do not use a set list, correct? That's correct. Never have? Yeah. So when you, you're playing tonight in Boston, so when you hit the stage, are you going to have any idea where you're going to start or finish? Uh, yeah, I have to have a little idea because i got to let Judah know which, which uh, guitar <laughs> to use. So. But, but other than that, I mean, but are, are you going to emphasize songs on the new record? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. And there are things that will hit, you know, if we have a... Uh, like a, a two or three song segue that feels really good one night, we'll probably hit it again the next night, you know? So it's all a developmental yeah. process. Yeah. Cause if you get a reaction from the crowd to that can, songs seem to be, you know, more interactive. You can feel that from the stage? Well, there's a lot of that. I mean, that's part of the band, you know, just feeding the energy and John going off on tangents while we hold, 
called Groove Down, that isn't a written format. It's not, they're not songs. More like sort of literal, literal tangents and, and sometimes yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, physical tangents, like running into the crowd or... Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah. we have, uh, we like to leave things open. And uh, so if we had a set list, then I don't think it would work as well. It wouldn't be as fun. Be boring, yeah. yeah. There was there was a bit. I saw the clip. You did a um, a thing for Rolling Stone where the the ten songs that you uh, uh, of yours that you wanted to emphasize or at least made were important to you, and one of them was from an Australian TV performance yeah. where things went a little out of control. Yeah. Tell me what happened there. It's a great to look up if you're on YouTube. Look up John's. Uh, 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 the Rolling program. Stone it's uh, the the clip is from an Australian morning show, and it was on in the morning, taped li uh, filmed live, mm -hmm. broadcast live, Saturday morning, I think, Saturday or Sunday. Anyway, it was called uh, Recovery, mm -hmm. and uh, so if you could look that up, the song is Two Kinds of Love, and it's on Recovery. Uh, yeah, we we were booked in there to, to to perform a song, and we started playing the song, and then we just freaked out, and we, it wasn't planned. We just did it, and uh, the God bless the Australian broadcasting corporation <laughs> they they let us go you know they they, they we weren't you know, the big hook didn't come out we just <laughs> freaked out yeah. apparently in australia it's one of the most viewed vi uh, music videos on youtube is it really yeah. it's, uh, well it should be was it was uh, just a thought here was uh, the cramps lux interior ever a, a role model oh in that sure respect? yeah okay yeah. yeah cramps are a great band yeah absolutely because yeah. that he yeah i see saw him do that kind of thing many a time yeah. and it was like you always had the feeling that the, the chaos might just bust loose out of the uh, out of the mix. Um, well, why don't we get back into music? You're going to play a couple of songs in a row. If that's now, okay. We, it's a music yeah. and interview show. We want both. Okay. Uh, right. Tell us what two you're going to play. If you, uh, I think oh, we're going to try to play the old ones and then play some new ones. If that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Check one, two, thank everybody at Boston, thank everybody on the TV, thank everybody on the radio, it's the Blues Explosion. This one goes out to my man Jim over here. Okay, I decided we're supposed to, but I got the cheap mind. Invitation in extended margarine Got the black out, baby, go bust a nut I'm always a feeling bad I'm gonna get you back down in the Put the pole I all sense a monkey Get down, you gotta Oh, yeah, you, you, you got to help Gentlemen, 
Bronx, baby. I'm down in New York City. Everything is so pretty. I got a rock box, baby. I said, Chiba, Chiba, that's a place to be. But you gotta make a left on the Bowery. You gotta learn to boot that before a corner. Bad blue boys with out of order. Rock box, baby. So pretty I got a rock box, baby Yeah Everybody wants just a little bit more But you gotta get money just to get in the door I don't you bet now follow me Cause you're gonna sneak into the back alley
<laughs> One quote you gave, John, a while ago about uh, wildness, I guess you were saying that all the wildness that you do is restricted to the stage now. You're not, you're a, a man of a certain age. You're not indulging in things you might have indulged in when you were younger. And, you know, so that whole, whoa, the band is so high, they're going to be partying all night long after the show's over. That's not really the case, I guess, anymore, right? Uh, no. I mean, you do, you do what you do. <laughs> yeah. um, what, what, have, what kind of regimen do you have to kind of undertake to kind of keep the energy going love. through all these shows and A lot tours? of love. A lot of love. You got to like doing it. I mean, for me, I don't really do anything. I just, I like to just play with these guys, man, you know. I don't sit around, like, practicing too much. I practice with them when we're doing tours. Mm -hmm. and I like doing it. Well, look, I think that's, uh, that's good for us. Uh, this is, we well, got one more song for you to play what out do you want on. Us to play? I will, uh, well, let me sign off. I'll just say okay. this right. is. Sorry. But it's all right. Boston Rock Talk. Uh, I'm Jim Sullivan. I've been your host. John Spencer Blues Explosion has been our guest today. And now there's a discussion about what song they want to play us out with. And uh, what are you in the mood for? What's your, what's the zeitgeist? What's the vibe? <clears throat> what, anything you want, uh, that'll work for us. Uh. You want an old one or a new one? Go for a new one. Okay, let's, let's, let's do, do it. A, let's do a new All one. All right. Do the get down maybe? I don't know, does that work? What, what'd you say? The get down? What? Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Jim Sullivan. Thank you, everybody in Boston. Thank you, everybody on the TV. Thank you, everybody on the radio. Check one, two. As the Blues Explosion on the drum, Russell Simmons. Electric guitar, Mr. Judah Bauer. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you so much. We want to thank everybody at home, listening in, watching in, tuning in, flipping out. Right now. Right now. Another song from the new record, name of the record. Freedom Tower. Freedom Tower. Are you ready? Come on now. Everybody. Look it down. That's what we got to do. A man getting down, short dress pants, a short t-shirt, get to work right now up on that stage. The world's oldest teenager, clown of friends with no ass kissing, buddy. You just don't know what you've been missing. That's a friend new dance, let's go around, get with it. We got the good now. I get down. That's what we got to do. Time in the front, drink your arm back quick and then with a bump. Act the cool so last year's in front, baby. Is that clear? Hey man, what got changed? Think you're so good looking, don't got to explain. Oh, fellas, you got to realize that's the funkiest man alive. Scratch. 